Now we are in the proctor's house, outside of the village. John's wife, Elizabeth, tells him that four judges have been sent from Boston to investigate the case of witchcraft in Salem. Apparently, there are 14 people in jail already. Elizabeth urges John to tell everyone that Abigail and the rest of the girls are lying. John isn't so sure and says he'll think about it. But Elizabeth isn't happy and thinks John is just trying to protect his old love affair, Abigail. Sneaky, sneaky, right? Resentfully, John says that he has been trying to cater to Elizabeth's every need since Abigail has gone. John and Elizabeth's servant, Mary, returns from court, saying that the court proceedings have made her feel unwell. Then she hands Elizabeth a little rag doll, which she sewed while sitting through the court proceedings. Spooky, right? When John asks about the 14 women arrested, Mary cries that there are now 39. She says that one of them, Sarah Good, even tried to accuse her in open court. Some good news too, though. Mary says that she defended Elizabeth's name in court. Wait a second, who would be accusing Elizabeth? Elizabeth correctly guesses that it was Abigail who accused her. She tells John that Abigail wants to get her out of the way so she can have John all for herself. Sheesh, so much fighting over John. This is the last straw for him. And he decides to go to Salem and expose Abigail's lies, even if it means exposing their love affair. Then Reverend Hale arrives, throwing a spanner in the works by questioning John about just how Christian his household really is. Reverend Hale asks why the proctor's third son is not baptised. John, unable to restrain himself, admits that he does not respect Reverend Paris and did not want the Reverend to baptise his youngest son. Even so, John insists that he's still a practising Christian. Dissatisfied with his answer, Reverend Hale asks John to recite the Ten Commandments from the Bible. Now, John might be a faithful Christian, but he's definitely not a memory wizard. He gives it a crack, though, and unsteadily recites the commandments, counting them on his fingers. He fatefully forgets the commandment against adultery until Elizabeth reminds him. Awkward! Good try, John but the Reverend still feels suspicious. Reverend Hale believes that tripping up over the commandments is a sign of weakness. Elizabeth urges John to tell Reverend Hale about Abigail's lies. With difficulty, John reveals that Abigail told him that there was no witchcraft involved. He says that the girls who had confessed to witchcraft so far were only scared that they would be hanged otherwise. Two more townspeople, Giles Corey and Francis Nurse, enter the house, visibly shaken and deeply troubled. Both their wives, Martha Corey and Rebecca Nurse, have been arrested. Hold on, they arrested Rebecca? How could they arrest someone so admired in the town and so religious? Is anyone safe in Salem? Giles is acting pretty guilty after all, he was the one who asked Reverend Hale to investigate his wife in the first place. Hale makes everyone take a deep breath before asking Giles for the full story. Angrily, Giles explains that his wife was charged of witchcraft by a man called Walcott. Apparently, Walcott bought a pig from his wife, but the pig died soon after. Giles's wife refused to give him his money back. Since when was not having a refund policy a sign of witchcraft? Ezekiel Cheever, who arrested Giles and Francis's wives, arrives. He's here to search the house for the doll Mary made for Elizabeth. Cheever discovers a needle in the stomach of the doll, as if the doll wasn't creepy enough already. He arrests Elizabeth, explaining that Reverend Paris discovered a needle stuck in Abigail's belly that night. 
Abigail had accused Elizabeth's spirit of pushing in the needle. Now things are really starting to get out of hand. Mary says that she was the one who left the needle in the doll while she was sewing it, and John angrily snatches the warrant from Cheever's hands and rips it to shreds. He yells at Cheever, telling him to drop the ridiculous charges against his wife. But Elizabeth is already preparing for the worst, fighting back tears as she tries to stay calm. Finally, the unwanted guests leave. Only Mary and John are left. John decides that Mary should go with him to court so that they can tell everyone the truth. However, Mary refuses. And when John corners her, she blurts out that Abigail is willing to expose their affair to discredit John's claims. But John says that that was his plan all along. He is willing to ruin his reputation to ensure Elizabeth's safety. As the curtain falls, Mary sobs repeatedly, refusing over and over again to go to court and become more involved in the spooky events at Salem. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on The Crucible, check out our summary of Act 3.